what we've done tonight is we have asked some um, three alumni and one current student, all of whom did internships um, while they were getting their degrees from us. Uh, we've asked them to join a panel and answer some questions. I'll call out Jessica Hamilton first. Hi, Jessica. Jessica has not graduated yet, um, it, um, but Jessica did do an internship. In fact, um, she'll tell you more about her internship in just a minute, but um, I'll let her start. She's been doing um, kind of a content development uh, mm -hmm. internship for more than just a few months, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, almost. Um, I, I, we didn't put Danny on the panel, but we could have. She also has been doing an internship for way longer than just a few months. Um, so maybe we can ask her some questions at the end. Um, we also have, in my order, Brooke Jackson. Hi, Brooke. Um, Brooke graduated about a year ago. She did two, not one, right? You did two internships. I, I did one internship and then I worked at UNT, so. Okay. It's a little bit <laughs> but there you go. So she got two work experiences while she was a student. Um, honestly, we don't care if they're called internships. Like what, I don't care what they're called. I just care that you get experience, right? And then the other person I want to call out is Jacqueline Jazzo, who also graduated about a year ago, a little more than that. Um, yeah, and yeah. <laughs> she, also had a proposal or had a, uh, uh, an internship that I think led her down a career path she didn't necessarily know about before she got there. I don't know, we'll let her, we'll let her tell you. So I think from what I hear from students, one of the things that they always want to know is how did you find this internship? Like that's a super big question for everybody. So I'm just going to, let's have, Jessica, um, Brooke, and then Jacqueline, uh, try and answer that for us, if you would. Yeah, absolutely. So you want me to go ahead and go? Perfect. Okay, so finding my internship was kind of a last minute thing. <laughs> I was actually talking to my mentor beforehand and she was like, oh, have you gotten an internship? You're a junior, you need to be looking. I was like, I didn't know that now would be the time to start looking. Um, so August, 2019, I just jumped on Indeed and I put in, I think all I searched for was content. I was like, I, I really didn't know what area that I wanted to go into. Um, I was still trying to figure it out going into my junior year. And um, I put in an application, you know, you put your, um, your resume and cover letter in on Indeed and you had the option to email. So I just sent um, the, my current manager just a quick little email introducing myself saying if um, I have a pro or a portfolio, if she was interested in seeing it. And um, about a week later, I got a response. Yeah, so with me, um, I had a really weird way that I sort of fell into this internship. I um, interned at Project 202, which is where I'm working now. Um, but when I was a freshman, um, so I just finished one semester of uh, the comm design program and then one semester uh, doing like tech comm classes, um, I ran into a Project 202 recruiter at, um, at school at a job fair and it was a job fair for design internships. Um, I'm not sure if they're still doing those right now, <laughs> um, but I ran into her. And we had like a great conversation and she said, oh, submit your portfolio. And so I did. Um, and she ended up um, asking me to do a phone interview. And I didn't end up getting chosen <laughs> because uh, she was saying, we're, we're looking for a little more academic experience. Just let's just keep in contact. And so, of course, during that time, um, I ended up taking um, Dr. Lamb's 4400 class. So that was the app design, that kind of thing. And I ended up starting to work at UNT. And so I came back and I was like, hey, I have an experience now. Um, <laughs> and they were like, okay, cool. And so I, I had an actual interview um, for Project 202. They did a design challenge. And so from there, that's kind of how I got my internship. It's kind of a weird way, but I um, definitely want to stress networking and keeping in contact because that will definitely help. And if they're impressed with you, then they're going to definitely 
um, keep you in mind when those things come up. If just it just depends on the company, on the cycle they're going through. So just keep in contact. <laughs> so my my internship I found just going on LinkedIn and I actually applied through like an easy apply button. All I had to do was submit my resume. Um, so it's definitely worth applying that way. Uh, so with my internship, I actually, um, at that point, I think the department was still sending out emails like every Monday, I think it was, um, about different internships that we could apply for. Uh, I didn't intend on applying, mostly because I was absolutely nervous. Um, I had no idea what I was doing. I am like a first generation college kid in my family. Like they had no idea what I was doing. So it was just this whole like, nobody knows what's going on. Um, but it was actually uh, Miss Beeson that really encouraged me to go ahead and apply. And I had already taken uh, procedures and manuals at that point with her. So I had stuff that I could give, um, you know, I had like actual portfolio pieces. So thankfully she encouraged me. So I went ahead and applied. I had to send in, um, this was a little different since they like kind of directly reached out to the department. So I just had to email my resume and portfolio to uh, my now VP. And so from there, we just did interviews and I'm so glad now that I did it. So <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> so I'm definitely, I've heard several people say portfolio pieces. Um, so obviously resumes matter, but I, I think we can agree. Portfolio pieces are super important when you're an entry level person who's in college, it's your way to show that you have some relevant knowledge. You can produce things that companies want. So I think that's one of the common threads. And I think um, Tina would probably say the same thing if she was here, Tina Davis. Uh, anybody have to take a test? You took a design challenge, Brooke. That's like a test. Anybody else? I had to do a grammar test. Okay. Okay. So you did uh, like a grammar editing test. Mm -hmm. Okay. Brooke, you want to say a couple of words about the design challenge? Yeah. Um, it was uh, terrifying <laughs> just to say, just full transparency, but um, it's, it's really cool because even if you don't have a lot of um, experience. So, I mean, I had my academic experience and I, it was enough to get me the interview finally, <laughs> like the design challenge interview. Um, it's really cool because they really want to just see how you think about things. So, um, I mean, for us, like my company is really big. We were really big on communication skills and problem solving. And so they want to see that you can do that. And so um, at least with my company, so this was a UX design internship position. I should clarify that. Um, they wanted to, they gave me some prompts and they gave me some research to support these prompts, um, just pretending that we had gone through that phase. And they said, choose a prompt and design a few screens, show us your process, and then we'll come back in like 45 minutes and um, you can talk us through it. And so that's, so I didn't really feel like I got every, I'm definitely the person I want to make sure everything's prepared and um, I've got everything down. But um, I came back and I just showed them my thought process and they were like, okay, this is great. Um, and we had a conversation about some of my portfolio pieces. So that portfolio comes back. <laughs> they wanna see that you can present and talk to your work. And so um, that was kind of the extent of my internship interview. And I, um, I actually got to interview with my manager who she's my manager today. So it, it all, um, it's all kind of come full circle, which is really cool. But yeah, design challenges, that's pretty common for any um, UX design position. Um, if you're going into more research, then they're going to probably want to talk to you just about your portfolio. Um, but design or coding, they typically have some challenges around there. So you can expect that. Excellent. So let me ask you to spend uh, a couple of minutes talking about the kind of tasks or the kind of work that you did as an intern and how it changed when you got the job you've got now. So Jessica, you can just talk about how your 
position has evolved, maybe. But mm-hmm. Brooke and Jacqueline can talk about how what they did at their internship either is like what they do now or isn't. Yeah, sure thing. Um, so like I mentioned, I'm a content management intern kind of transitioning into full time. Um, we're still trying to work out the details, but um, right off the bat, I'm very, very heavily involved in writing. So when I first came in with my portfolio pieces, oh, I didn't have anything with writing. <laughs> so that was their biggest thing. They're like, hey, can you write? I'm like, oh, that would have been a really good idea to put into this um, starting out. <laughs> I can write, I promise you I do. So um, when I started out, I was mostly optimizing blogs and um, part of our coursework within the, uh, the major is a lot of technical documentation, technical editing. Um, so transferring over to the blog side where uh, you have to talk about software in a conversational way, it was kind of a transition like, okay, it has to be directive, but also you need to be answering the questions that people are asking while they're reading and while they're thinking. Um, so I take care of that side. And then, um, part of that was social media too. I managed the company's, um, LinkedIn and Facebook profiles. Uh, I made connections. I managed two different groups and part of the bigger pieces of content. So those blogs and eBooks, I would have to break down into pillar content or like, um, in smaller mediums like email or social media posts, I would do those. Now we've transitioned into writing eBooks. So that's probably one of the most terrifying things and in webinars. I was just on a webinar uh, two weeks ago talking about uh, the company software, which as a college student, you know, you're like, I'm going to be talking to actual people who are going to be using this for their businesses. How do I know that sort of information? So it's evolved into a lot of research and really developing the pieces, directing it towards a specific audience. And I think that's probably been the biggest transition for me. I don't know if that answered the question. Yeah, I think it's good, Jessica. Brooke, you want to talk about how your internship did or didn't prepare you for what you do now? Yeah, so I would say mine was definitely less hands-on. I know with, so we're consultancy, which means that people bring us in to um, be the experts. And when you're an intern, you're not exactly an expert. Um, so we, we weren't really allowed to do a lot of client work. Um, we all, everything we, so there are two of us, I should say, there, when I say we, um, the two of us uh, supported some small um, efforts. So um, for example, we, we call our user testing validation testing. And so um, we sat through some validations and we were able to help um, take notes. And it was really exciting when someone told us to make a content change or something, we could get in the sketch files um, and, and make a change there. Um, we were also fortunate to be able on that, within that same work stream, um, help out with some data synthesis. And so um, we have a lot of activities that sometimes it takes all hands. Um, so affinity diagramming is one of those things. Um, and so we were able to help out with that and create some deliverables. Um, with consulting, it's just so hard to um, find work for interns just because you don't, you know, with the client, you don't need an, an intern answering to the client and the interns aren't billing the client. So <laughs> it's a little different, but, um, and so I would say like the, the work I did day to day was compared to the work I'm doing now is completely insignificant. <laughs> um, but what I really learned about when I was an intern, so this was actually, I uh, was working at UNT. I went and did the internship and I came back to UNT. And so I came back to UNT having a way better understanding of what agile was, of what people do day to day. I got a lot of advice from, um, from people who unintentionally got some practice just presenting and defending some design decisions. And I know coming back, I, um, my confidence just like skyrocketed. Um, and so I, they were able to expose me to just some of those things, but, but now what I do day to day, 
Um, I say as a consultant, it completely depends because one day I could be helping and supporting research. Another day I could be working on screens. Um, right now I'm working on orientation content. So I'm very thankful for my uh, tech comm background <laughs> right now um, as we're thinking through some of these things. But um, yeah, I would say from the internship, um, the biggest difference is I was more of a shadow as an intern and I got that exposure that I needed to understand the, the business and understand how all of that worked. And now I'm actually doing the thing. So <laughs> um, I would say that was the biggest difference from those two times. Awesome. It is different working in consulting. That that is a different a different world. Jacqueline, yes. tell us a little bit about your internship versus your full time job. Sure. So I would say the biggest takeaways that I got from my internship um, interned at a radio company, so they would design radio systems um, for like firefighters and policemen, um, a lot of like mission critical type work. And then I now work for an engineering design firm that does a variety of things. So there's like water and energy, environmental, um, oil and gas. Um, there's various groups that design different types of projects. Um, I will say that I think my internship taught me kind of a general overview of the proposal process I set in on meetings. So I kind of got a sense of like the structure of what day to day would look like. Um, I, I did some work with cover letters and graphics, and then I worked on some like documentation because we were adding a new um, type of system um, to kind of like our proposal process. So we were proposing a different type of system than the other one. Um, and that was kind of evolving as we became part of a corporation. Um, now in my day to day, um, it's just such, a diverse and like fast paced environment that um, definitely there's a lot more going on and we're a consultancy. And so um, it's, a, it's very client driven um, and it's definitely very much attention to detail. And, um, but I do create graphics. I work on cover letters and um, project descriptions. I write those. So um, definitely was a nice introduction um, but I've learned so much more about the process in these past, it's almost two years. Because your, um, your internship, Jacqueline, was in um, proposal writing, we don't, at one point in time, we didn't talk very much about proposal writing as a career path, but in fact, it is a career path. Um, many tech comm people do proposal writing. Um, mm -hmm. And especially in, well, different kinds of firms, obviously, that are selling their services um, to other businesses or to the government, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, did you, I assume you found out you liked proposal writing? I think what I loved about it is the competitive nature of it. I also just like the diversity of things that you do each day. So, yeah, absolutely. It's interesting. Um, one of the things that um, many people will say about their internship experience is it's not always you want to stay there. Like we're, we're hearing good, if, you know, not a good, a good internship doesn't necessarily mean you want to stay in that industry or even in that kind of job. Sometimes what it tells you is this is not really what I feel great about doing every day. And so maybe I should try something different. That's just as important um, as having the kind of experience that you're hearing Jessica, Jacqueline, and, and Brooke have had. Danny, um, have, your, have your duties changed at Mr. Cooper? I don't know if I would say that my, I don't think my, my duties haven't necessarily changed. I think it's more, there's an added sense of responsibility and an added amount of the duties than I was doing before. Um, so like I've taken on a few reports that, you know, I have to run and manage essentially. Um, but those are, reports are so easy and like they're just kind of check and then go kind of thing. Um, but we are, right now we've got this huge project, Victoria knows, because we are both working together and it's been insane. But 
we now are like trying to meet deadlines and you know there's there's not that leeway that you experience when you're an intern now it's kind of like hey this is the big league you gotta get this done because if you don't people aren't going to like you very much <laughs> so it's it's interesting i just think that it's mostly the responsibility that evolves and it makes the position a little bit different um and how you see it because suddenly there's more at stake so Tina, I can, Tina Davis, I can see your picture. Are you I am, I am finally oh, here. Thank you very much. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Um, thank you for the invite, first of all. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, my internship experience was with Tyler Technologies in Plano. Uh, Tyler uh, provides uh, municipal software and the Plano location is actually also uh, corporate headquarters, but it's also uh, uh, their, uh, the center of their courts and justice division. And so my internship was, uh, was being a technical writer in their tech pubs department for the courts and justice division. So tell us how, what did you learn at that job that you took with you? Well, uh, lots of things. So I, the internship, in the internship, I was the sole writer uh, for a team, and that team was actually uh, a nonprofit that partners with Tyler, and the nonprofit hired me directly, but not as a technical writer. Um, my official uh, uh, job is, uh, title is pr uh, product specialist. But the cool thing about it, which is more like an analyst role, but the cool thing about it is all the skills that I learned at UNT uh, in the degree program and all the skills that I was able to use uh, writing their documentation works perfectly in the role that I have now. I am uh, uh, talking with subject matter experts and thinking about what users need. I'm still writing their documentation as a uh, product specialist. Um, and all those skills, uh, curiosity, putting yourself in the user position, uh, drafting personas, like all the different things that I was able to do at UNT really flowed nicely into that role. Yeah, Tina. Um, so, so you actually met your current, you met the company that you work for now through your internship. Okay. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Did somebody say networking, networking, <laughs> networking, networking? It is the number one way to find a position. People know people when they know you and they like you and they think you probably do a pretty good job, they're gonna wanna talk to you when they have a need. Um, really, network, network, network. I can't say that often enough. <laughs> Let's talk about interviews a little bit. Uh, since we didn't really, we didn't, I mean, we talked about the design challenge and we talked about resume and portfolio, but we didn't really say anything about interviews. So can each of you describe what your interview process was like? Like how many interviews and who did you talk to? Yeah, uh, definitely. I had two, technically like two and a half um, steps to my interview. So the first one I was brought in uh, with my current manager and then two of the previous interns that worked at the place, uh, which is a really excellent idea to have interns interviewing other interns because they have insight that your company needs. Anyway, um, they asked uh, lots of the basic questions, of course, like what, what, um, what have your courses been like? What has prepared you? Um, if you're at all into content writing, the biggest question they're going to ask you is, do you know what SEO is? Yes, I did. <laughs> and that's thanks to, um, actually, it was Dr. Campbell's class. We did a project, a writing project, and part of it was um, understanding what SEO is. I was like, yes, I'm prepared for this question. Um, but they asked in a way that made it relatable. And then uh, the second part of my interview was a phone conversation with the it's a very small company. So it was the CEO's assistant. <laughs> um, she wanted to get a little bit more of a feel for my background. She wanted to have a conversation about um, where I saw myself within the company in a few years, if I chose to. Um, so, and 
that process took a little longer because they're busy all the time. So I had, we'd set up an interview time. She'd be like, sorry, can't do it. Sorry, can't do it. So that one took about two or three weeks to nail down. But um, after that second phone interview, uh, it was pretty much smooth sailing after that. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, yeah, Brooke, go ahead. Tell us what the interview process was like at Project Yeah, so um, it's funny because mine was, was just so weird. And I had, <laughs> I had that one phone interview in 2017, and then I came back to do another interview in 2018. Um, but typically, <laughs> um, I, I got in contact with the recruiter. I sent her my um, portfolio. The way we hire people here is we have our talent management people um, go through job requirements and, and what we're looking for in our culture. Um, and so some of the questions I remember her asking me, I, and it was, it was a few years ago now, <laughs> but um, she, she asked me like, do you know what we do? What do you know about software development? Um, and and I, I just wanna say, it's really important that you do your research about the company. I just happened to really, really like that company. So I got really excited about it. Um, <laughs> But if, if you go in not really having that interest in the company, they're not, they're going to see that as a red flag typically. Um, so that's one thing we, we like to do with that initial phone call is just gauge interest. If you're, if you're not going to be, um, if they don't really see that, that a little bit of that passion that so many of our people do have, they're not really going to see you as a culture fit. So um, just, just uh, some advice there for sure. But um, so I had that, typically they would call me in for a second interview. Um, I made sure to ask her when I could expect to hear from her. That's, that's also important because I'm, I go crazy if I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, and so it's always good to have that sort of communication going with the person. Um, and then I got called in to do a design challenge and portfolio review, kind of like I mentioned before. Um, and that's really where they kind of ask about your experience and um, they want to see that for interns, they want to see that that interest is there and that you would be a good fit and you have a good baseline understanding of um, what the job responsibilities would would entail. Um, I know it, it varies company to company on what they're looking for, um, but at Project 202, they, um, I mean, it's so rare to have such formal um, UX design training. And so they want to see that you're interested and you have that kind of human centered approach to your work. Um, and then after that, um, I unfortunately didn't get to do mine because our uh, uh, practice lead, um, local practice lead was out of town, um, but they typically have um, a meeting with um, like, it's just us and then the, like a, a leader in the company um, usually it's like a, for us, it's like a local Dallas leader. Um, and so they just want to see that you're a good culture fit. Um, <laughs> like I, my, the practice lead at the time told me that he had a really good radar for sniffing out drama. Um, so he just doesn't allow that to come through. And so I'm assuming that's what that meeting is. And it's just kind of a good way to just have a final pass before they sign, they send you a contract. Um, and, and that looks different for actual jobs, but with the internship, they're really looking for like that interest and motivation to, to do a good job. So that was my experience. Awesome. Thank you, Brooke. With a lot of what Brooke was saying, like they're looking for like passion and organization skills and things like that. Um, my first, so I first had kind of a virtual presentation. I was told to do like a two to five minute presentation and it was in front of like the director of the proposal team, the pursuit team and some like engineering managers. Um, and then after I passed that round, I talked a little bit more with the recruiter and then I came in for like a, a tour day and I had lunch with the team um, and got to know them and then did more, like a, a more formal like interview. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't too bad. It was, it was pretty casual overall. It, it wasn't like something to be super scared about. <laughs> um, they, they asked a lot of questions about um, like 
the tech com program. They were interested in that because um, they didn't know that there were classes more dedicated towards business communication. So that was a lot of the mm. discussion that we had. Thank you for spreading the word. Uh, awesome. Thank you, Jacqueline. Tina, how about you? What was your interview process like at uh, Tyler? Uh, mine was uh, unusual as well. Uh, so the first time I met the uh, head of the tech post department at Tyler, um, there was there were some wires crossed, and I had showed up, and we were told UNT was told it was a developer and a tech writer job fair. Well, it turned out it was just a, a developer job fair, and so I showed up, and I am literally the only tech writer, you know. Uh, person that is there among all these, you know, wannabe developers. And so they quickly told me, um, we're not hiring tech, uh, tech writer interns just yet. And I'm like, well, I'm here. Can I just meet the head of tech pubs anyway, and just put, put my resume in front of him and just get my face in front of him for five minutes. And so I sat down with Cedric and I'm like, I understand you're not hiring now, but what is the job like when, you know, you are looking for an intern? And it was a very interesting situation because I was able to ask a lot of pretty questions um, about the position, how many interns that they had had historically, what kind of work I could um, expect and, and just get my, my resume out in front of him and just put my face out in front of him and like, hey, when you're hiring for that intern in a couple months, remember me. And so a couple months later, I did find out, okay, now they're ready to hire the intern. And I called him back and I'm like, hey, I talked to you a few months ago. Can we have a sit down? And he said, yes. And very much like uh, Jacqueline said, um, UNT has a really good reputation for courses um, and what the degree program offered and what they were teaching students. And my interview was more like uh, organization questions um, are you, you know, they, they're not expecting, especially for an intern, for you to have a lot of experience. And so they asked me a lot about what I was writing in my coursework and what kind of portfolio I had. And they wanted more questions about, um, could I be self-directed? How do I work in a team dynamic? That type of thing. Uh, and so it was very important for them, um, that focus is very important for them because the tech writers in their shop, it's one writer per team and that writer is also probably writing for multiple teams. And so you have to juggle there. I mean, there is one, you know, Cedric is over the, the entire department. And so he helps those, those uh, writers when they come across an obstacle, but it's really up to you as a writer to make inroads with your team and get your requirements and get your data and, and you've got to manage your own work. And, and I was lucky in my internship, I was only on one team. Um, but I know, you know, day to you know, day, -day full-time writers in that shop, they're in multiple teams and they're, and they're writing guides and, and stuff for multiple products. And so that's what they really wanted to know. And it was cool that I, you know, uh, didn't have as much, uh, experience writing about software, um, but that, that I understood what was required for writing about software and more importantly, oh, and uh, that I knew what Agile was. Uh, they had just made, they were sort of in the first few years of making that switch from Waterfall to Agile. And so just even being familiar with some basic Agile concepts, like, you know, kind of put me over the head as well. I'm so glad you guys are here. It's so good to see you and to see your success. Um, it's like 445. So um, I, I'm happy to open it up for questions. We don't have so many people. I think you can just unmute yourself and ask. I'll be silent for a couple of seconds. And if I don't hear from anybody, I can keep asking questions. 
I do have uh, one question, I guess, for everyone. Um, did you find that, because I also noticed that in my uh, interview that they knew about the UNT program. So do you think that the TechCom program and having that under your belt as a technical communicator really set you apart? Oh, yes, definitely, definitely. Um, uh, there is some awareness that, because uh, UTA doesn't have a separate department, they have a few courses and they have uh, dedicated instructors, but they're part of the English department as far as I can figure out. Um, uh, UTD has a strong um, sort of technical slash business presence, but they don't have a, a technical uh, writing uh, curriculum that I can tell, but uh, the professors there are more active in the local uh, STC, Society for Technical Communications branch. And so that's kind of how they, they, they get on the radar of things. But as far as the Metroplex, UNT is, is known for having the separate department with undergraduate and undergraduate level set of courses um, they are very aware that um, uh, they put out a lot of solid interns. Um, I was asked if, if I had if I had gone up for a Southwest in, uh, internship program. So they they are aware that there's a funnel there. Um, it it was it was interesting. The the person I interviewed with was aware of the program and wanted more nuts and bolts. But the writers that were in the pro, uh, that were in the department. We're, we're actually kind of shocked uh, <laughs> that there was a separate program, um, um, but they, you know, they had they hadn't gone back into academia since they gotten their first degree, and they may have gotten their degrees when TechCom was not, you know, its own separate discipline from English, and so a lot of the the technical writers I met um, were, were English grads um, who had some somehow stumbled into writing for uh, TechCom. But yes, UNT is very well known here. That's awesome. That's really good to hear, especially I know um, that in my department, I, I don't think anyone except for really Victoria and I have an actual tech comm degree. Um, the person who had originally started the internship program at our current company, she actually went through the master's program a few years ago and that's how she found out about it. And she was really gung ho and was like, I really want interns from there. So people are starting to hear about the master's program as well. Yeah. So it's pretty cool to hear, especially from others that, you know, this is definitely something that's making you stand out, you know, um, did Brooke, Jacqueline or Jessica, have you guys experienced that as well? Like with your teams and everything or, I, for me, UX is a little unique um, because we have a lot of people that come out of UTD and we had a lot of people that came through the comm design program at UNT. So UNT is like really, everyone's really familiar with the design program and we don't have a whole lot of people who are new grads. Um, we just, we haven't hired a lot of juniors recently and so they're not as familiar with our program but I'm making them familiar. <laughs> um, we actually have, we just started a content strategy practice. So I'm hoping that we can kind of like start um, melding our like our corporate relations, you know? Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's, while they didn't know about it, they thought it was really cool. And they really like that. Um, I would say what's really unique about this program is how much experience you get like working with nonprofits and that actually ended up being so helpful for consulting. And so they like to see that, that those communication skills. So um, I, of course I tell them that it's a good program, but <laughs> yeah, it's a little unique. I, um, I definitely feel the same way. Like in my experiences, a lot of like the marketing and proposal professionals usually are like, they come from an English background or like graphic design or some something very like liberal arts. So it's a nice way to have your, your resume kind of align more with the job description, especially if it says something like technical writing in there. Um, it's it's a nice thing to have, definitely. It shows that you did coursework that was more focused on business and technical writing. 
I would agree, Jacqueline, because I've had a lot of people who are familiar with like a UNT's journalism program, and they kind of assume, oh, content, oh, UNT, oh, so you must be a journalism student. No, technical communication, and I've talked to a few uh, people, even my sister is considering um, <laughs> switching because um, it's just, it with so many companies operating virtually now, everybody's using software in one shape or form and knowing how to communicate features and knowing how to communicate instructions and, and guides is one of the most important things. So I think um, definitely doing the same thing as you guys is really pushing the UNT technical communication program. Awesome. And just as a last question, is there anything that you guys had to learn on the fly? I know that when I got the internship, I did not think I was going to use HTML as heavily as I had to. So I was like, I think I spent a solid, you know, week or two almost crash course, crash coursing HTML so I could actually edit our documents. So I was just curious if you guys found anything that was kind of similar that you had to kind of run and hurry up and learn? I think Illustrator and InDesign are huge um, for proposals, definitely. That's something that I have to continuously like keep up to date with because when you're trying to create a lot of graphics in one day, it, it definitely is something you need to be fast at. I, I had to learn Illustrator as well because we were just creating, um, which I, I kind of knew a little bit, but I definitely, my, um, and these are just tools. And so a lot of times internships are like, they're really understanding of like, okay, you just need a little more training, take a week or two to figure it out. At least that was my experience, but um, Illustrator as well. Um, every, they're still not quite out of the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite. So <laughs> we all have to dabble in it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, so I had to use a tool that I was unfamiliar with. Uh, it's it's an older tool. It's called ArborText. I wish I was using Adobe Creative Cloud because I actually missed that from, from my coursework. <laughs> um, uh, so um, I was unfamiliar with the tool. I had to get used to that. But it, it's based on a concept that I learned in class. And so I think my my ramp up to learning it was a lot quicker. So um, having taken courses... Uh, uh, having taken uh, Liam's HTML course and having taken uh, 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 coursework that that introduced the concept of DITA, um, I think that was Dr. Beeson's, uh, um, it was one of my senior classes and I'm blanking and I'm so glad she's not on here because I would feel bad. <laughs> uh, but it was, it was the, uh, the, the, the writing procedures classes where I was introduced to that concept. Um, the the tool Arbor Tech text works on that concept, the idea that that you're you're making discrete uh, topics and that you're using a lot of tags in those topics in order to cross reference and all that stuff. Um, so the tool was new to me, but because I was it wasn't data wasn't new to me, I I was able to pick it up. I think a lot quicker. You shut down everything I wanted to throw out there that I am a member of the local STC branch. Uh, they are starting a mentoring, uh, an actual mentoring program within that, uh, uh, within that branch. And so uh, if you know someone or if you're about to go into your senior year and you're looking for a mentor to help you, please reach out to me. Uh, Dr. Kim found me through LinkedIn. I'm usually there on LinkedIn. Um, but it is definitely geared toward people who are in their junior or senior years and who are putting together the portfolios and, and really need help, you know, navigating um, uh, the, the professional world. And it's a program where you're matched one on one with a mentor and you even get a small project and you can talk to other mentors and get and get advice. And so I totally can't um, shout this out enough. Uh, so if you guys know any students or if you're personally interested, please contact me um, for the next round of mentors. So that would be great. Awesome. Thank you so much. And it's, yeah. and it's so good to see you, Brooke and Jacqueline, and it's so good to see you guys. Just really it's, uh, network. And, yeah, yeah. It's just, and I'm just so happy for everybody. And it's nice to meet you, Jessica. 
All right. Well, thank you, everyone. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'm sure we'll be talking soon. <laughs> Bye. Right. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Danielle. Thanks.